Hello again, I'm Chris Carl, and welcome to my advanced handicapping course. We're here at the Palm Beach Kennel Club, and in this course I'm going to teach you my proven system for winning the Twin Trifecta and the Tri Super. In this, my advanced course, I'm also going to teach you how to establish a goal and a budget, and I'm going to give you seven tips that can lead to big payoffs in closely contested races. In my beginning course, I taught you how to use my system and chart for handicapping dog races. I taught you the 10 criteria that I use for handicapping a dog race and went into great detail about why each criteria is so important. I showed you how to use my system and chart to predict the finishing order in a race and gave you a brief description of the various bets that are available at most dog tracks. My basic course should have given you a decided advantage over most handicappers. In my intermediate course, I showed you how to structure bets. I went into detail about the types of bets that are available and gave you the overall odds against winning each particular bet. I showed you why a box is usually a poor bet and what the best alternatives are. I showed you how a partial wheel can really stretch your dollar and we saw the race in which the all-time world record winning streak of Patsy Rendezvous came to an end. Hopefully you've gone to the track and won by using my system. In this course I will teach you how to establish a goal and manage your money so that you minimize your losses and maximize your winnings. I will teach you how to use the odds in deciding how to make your bets. I will also teach you the strategy that I have used to win twin trifectas and tri supers. I will tell you how to change strategies when a twin trifecta or a tri super is capped and then again when there is a mandatory payout. I'm also going to point out seven situations that I look for in every race. I don't find them in all races, but when I do, I usually make money. I'm going to show you a little known bet that I often use in closely contested races. First, a little common sense. As I told you in my first two courses, this is gambling and there's no such thing as a guaranteed winner. I strongly suggest that you don't gamble with money that you can't afford to lose. You've learned to handicap and structure bets in my basic intermediate courses. Now what you need to do is establish a budget and a goal. If you enjoy going to the track and want to have fun and stay for all the races, then you need to take that into consideration when you are establishing your budget and goal. Budget an amount to bet on each race. Remember that you may want to spend more on races that have the twin trifecta, a superfecta, or one of the more exotic wagers. If you are going to the track like I do and your goal is to win a certain amount of money, then once you reach that goal, you must have another goal or be prepared to walk out a winner. Never leave without your bankroll and your attained goal once you have reached it. If you're going to the track to win a twin trifecta or a tri super, that's a whole different ball game. The first time I won a twin trifecta, there was a dog named Never Glad that finished in the money. There was over $25,000 in the pool, which I split with four other winners. I will never forget the name of that dog because of the hard time that I have personally had with money management. I've given back a fortune by giving in to the temptation of increasing my bets when I've been ahead. I've also lost a fortune by cutting back on my bets when I've been behind. Never glad typifies my nature. One day after I had been ahead over $700 and given it all back, I sat down and came up with the following chart to help me establish a goal a strategy to reach that goal, and a monitoring system to make sure that I stay with the plan. If you have a hard time with money management, this system will help. If you can't stick with this system, bring a friend to the track to help you. You can set this system up by using whatever figures you feel comfortable with, but stick with this formula. It will make you aware of the amount and status of the twin trifecta and tri super pools and enable you to clearly define your goal. First of all, we note the amount in the twin trifecta carryover pool and indicate if it is capped and if there is a mandatory payout. Second, we note the amount in the tri super carryover pool and indicate if it is capped and if there is a mandatory payout. Third, what we have done here is established our bankroll at $200. Four, we understand we can lose it all. Five, we have decided that we will bet the first 10 races at about $20 per race. Six, we have established a goal of $400. If we get ahead of our goal, we can leave at any time, but if we reach our goal of $400 or more, we will not leave without at least $400. And secondly, we have established a secondary goal of another $400. 
seven, we have maintained an arbitrary bet of $20 per race for up to 15 races and limited our total wages for the day to $300. Eight, we keep track of what we bet on every race and after every five races we total our bets to make sure that we are close to our betting limits. I always try and handicap the races for the twin trifecta and tri super first. Even if the carryover pools are small, I want to know how difficult the races are going to be. The reason for this is that the carryover pool is a bonus and if I think that I have a reasonable chance to win a twin trifecta or tri super, I will go for it. My strategy for winning the Twin Trifecta or Tri Super is begun by handicapping the second half first. The second half is where the big money lies. I want to know how the race looks. I want to know what kind of a bet will give me a good chance to win and what minimal bets might win. If I think it is going to take me 27 exchange tickets, for example a $27 partial wheel, to reasonably assure a win in the second half, then I go to the first half and figure out how much 27 reasonably sure winners in the first half will cost. If I have the money, I go for it. If I don't have enough, I will try and win it in the races leading up to the Twin Trifecta or the Tri Super. If I don't have enough to make my ideal bet when the first half of the Twin Trifecta or the Tri Super starts, then I will downsize to something affordable, still keeping my original second half betting possibilities in perspective. I know that if I can't win, most likely no one else can either, and the carryover pool will be that much bigger next time. Usually the dogs in the races that are part of a twin trifecta or a tri super are closely matched. However, if I feel that I have a good chance of winning it, I will bet on it. Let's look at the races where I was the outright winner of over $30,000 in a tri super. The carryover pool was getting up there. It wasn't capped and there was not a mandatory payout but I thought I had a good chance to win. This is how my system ranked the dogs in the second half. The two dog had 21 points, the four and the six dog had 15 points, the three dog had 14 points, the seven had 12 points, the five had 10 points, the eight had nine points, and the one had four points. These were my proposed bets. What I really wanted was a dollar superfecta wheel with the two on top, the three, four, six, seven in second, the three, four, five, six, seven, eight in third, and all dogs in fourth. That's a hundred dollar Superfecta wheel. So in order to make that bet, I would have to have 100 exchange tickets from the first half. My second alternative was another dollar Superfecta wheel with the two in first, the three, four, six in second, the three, four, six in third, and all dogs in fourth. That wheel cost $30, so I would need 30 exchange tickets to make that bet. Downsizing a little further, I have the two on top with the three, four, six in second, the three, four, six in third, and the three, four, six, seven in fourth. That bet cost $12, so I would need 12 exchange tickets. Downsizing a little further, what I have is the two dog on top the three, four in second, the three, four in third, and the six, seven in fourth. I need four exchange tickets to make that bet. Still downsizing, I go to the two on top, the three, four in second, the three, four in third, and the six in fourth. That's a two dollar bet. And going down to one shot, I have a straight superfecta of two, four, three, six. Now this is how my system ranked the dogs in the first half. I had the six on top with 24 points, the two in second with 23 points, the eight in third with 19 points, the five in fourth with 14 points, the three and the four each had 13 points, the one had 12 points, and the seven had nine points. For those of you who watched my basic course, this is the race we handicapped. These are my potential choices for bets. First, we have a dollar tri wheel with the two and six on top, the two six eight in second, and all dogs in third. The cost for this bet is $24. Going to something a little smaller, I've got the two and six on top, the two six eight in second, 
in the one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, and third. This bet cost $20. Going down a little smaller, I've got the two and six on top, the two and six in second, and all dogs in third. This ticket is $12. Now I go down a little smaller yet, and I have the two and six on top, the two and six in second, and the one, three, four, five, eight, and third. This ticket is $10. And going all the way down to $2, I've got the two and six on top, the two and six in second, and the eight and third. What I really wanted was 100 winning first half tickets. I usually want to be sure that I have at least one winner. I considered my budget and decided to bet the two six on top, the two six in second, in the one, three, four, five, eight, and third. That ticket is $10, and I bought it four times for a total cost of $40. Now let's take a look at the race. And they're off. That's six breaking on top two, moving up to the inside, four, five, seven, eight, moving up mid-track, three on the rail, and one. As they race around the first turn and come out onto the back stretch, that's two show in the early way, six racing second, four moving up mid-track, eight, one, three, seven on the outside, and five. Heading into the final turn, that's two in command, six racing second, four on the inside, and eight. In the sprint for home, that's two in front and going easily, six on the inside, and four. All right, this is great. What I ended up here with was four winning tickets. Now, I already knew what I was gonna bet because I had already structured my bets for the second half. So, my bet here is a dollar superfecta wheel with the two on top, the three, four in second, the three, four in third, and the six, seven in fourth. Now, let's watch the second half. And they're off. That's four breaking on top, six moving up mid track, three moving up on the inside, eight moving up on the outside, five on the inside, seven, one and two. As they race around the first turn and come out onto the back stretch, that's three with a big early lead, a wide margin back to two on the inside, four on the outside, six, seven, one, five on the rail and eight. Heading into the final turn, that's three in command, two trying to close the gap on the inside, four, six on the inside, seven and one. Heading for home, that's two moving through to take the lead, three on the inside and four. Well, this is incredible. I have never had an experience like this before. I was on cloud nine. I just won $30,000. Let's watch this race again. Now, I figured that the three and the four dogs would break, and I thought the only dog that could run them down was the two dog. At the first turn, the three and the four dogs were out there, and I was on cloud nine when the two dog made this incredible move to the inside at the turn, passing all the dogs except the three. I knew the two would catch the three and I knew that the four was gonna take third. All I needed was the six or seven in fourth place and there they were, both of them. I had it either way. Sometimes when you handicap a race, it just comes out like it's supposed to. It's, I, I couldn't have written a better script here. And believe me, I was on cloud nine at this time. Let's talk a little bit more about money management. On a normal day at the track, when the twin trifecta and tri-super pools are not capped and there is not a mandatory payout, and the races of the Twin Trifecta and Tri-Super are too tough to get excited about, I set an arbitrary figure of 10% of my betting money for each race. If I bring $200 for a bankroll, 10% will be $20. My goal is to bet about $20 per race. If I lose 10 straight races, hey, I'm out of here. If I see that the odds are good on a dog that the system says should be in the money, I may spend more than $20 on a bet to maximize the potential windfall. I've found that it's better to kick myself in the butt if I have to relieve a racer too early than to kick myself in the butt all day because the dog that the system said would be in the money was in the money. Many handicappers do not watch the odds board. They do not want to let the odds influence their betting strategy. I do watch the odds 
and I recommend that you do as well. The reason that I recommend that you watch the odds is simple. I want to know what kind of a return to expect on my bets. I will not bet $2 to win $2.20 or $2.40. I know and you should know too from my intermediate course the overall odds on any given wager. In deciding where the best return for my money lies, I watch the odds and then make my bets. The way to determine how good the odds are in a particular dog in a trifecta or a superfecta is to watch the quinella odds and the number of runners in the trifecta. Do not go by the win odds. They can be very misleading. By the same token, if a dog rates very high with my system and the win odds are good, I might make a win wager. Wait until close to post time to place your win bets because they can change rapidly in the seconds before post time. Most dog tracks do not provide place and show odds or even provide information about the place and show pool totals. I usually do not make those bets. If I think a dog will place or show, I will put it into a trifecta or a superfecta partial wheel. Any dog handicapping system can go right out the window if any one of the dogs in a race does something out of the ordinary. By structuring bets with keys, wheels, and sometimes boxes, you can cover any possible outcome in a race. The problem is that by doing so, you may spend more on a bet than the bet will pay. In any eight dog race, you can wheel all the dogs in a $1 trifecta wheel for $336. That is a lot of money to spend for a $1 trifecta because if the favorites win, place, and show, that $336 bet may only pay $10 or $20. By the same token, it may pay thousands. You have to understand that the track wins money on every race. They deduct a certain amount from the betting pools. We cannot win money on every race. We could win every race by wheeling all the dogs, but we would lose money in most races because the payoff would be less than the amount that we bet. This is why we set a goal, establish a budget, manage our money, handicap, structure bets, check the odds, and then make our bets. If I spend $30 on the first race and win or lose, I still budget $20 for the second race. If I see that the odds for the dogs that I like rank high in the system, I might cut down on my bet. I may key one dog over three dogs in a trifecta and spend $6, or wheel two dogs in first and second with all dogs in third for $12. The point is that in dog racing, each race is totally different and it is a combination of handicapping, bet structuring, and money management that makes a consistent winner. It is up to us to handicap, structure our bets according to our bankroll, and let the odds that are on the dogs dictate where our wagers should be made. There's always a temptation to bet more if you win, and there's always a temptation to bet more or less if you lose. I've learned the hard way to stay with both my handicapping system and my budgeting system. I know that on many days I will reach my goal. The key is patience. If you surpass your goal, then you can either leave or implement part two of your strategy by putting your bankroll and initial goal into your pocket and continuing on, trying to reach your second goal. That is, bet more races if you like, but stay with your budget and leave if you get down to your original goal plus bankroll. By using what I teach you in my three courses, you will go to the track with a proven handicap method the ability to structure bets, a game plan, and a goal. Okay, so what do we do differently if the twin trifecta or the tri-super pools are capped or there is a mandatory payout? If the pool has been capped, I will bring a little more money and bet as much as I can afford on the first half because the carryover pool has been capped and all the money bet on the first half, less the track's percentage, is paid off to the first half winners. I will make a series of partial wheels that will give me a sure winner, several hopeful winners, and enough two, three, or four dollar partial wheels or straight trifecta bets to give me a good shot at winning the second half. The amount of winners that I have will obviously dictate the second half bets that I can make. I'm never afraid to bet all that I have because I'm confident that I will at least get my money back from the few first half winning tickets and I just might hit the second half. If there is a mandatory payout, I will make that my priority of the day. Most of my budget will go toward the pool with the mandatory payout. 
The carryover pool will be split among any outright winners or among the first half winners as a consolation. Either way, I always feel that if there is an outright winner, it will be me, and if there is a consolation payoff, I will have my share of consolation winners. Here again, I am always confident that whatever amount that I bet on the first half will come back to me. There is no tomorrow in a mandatory payout, and the potential for a windfall is too good to pass up. I bet about $200 on the first half of a Tri Super that had a mandatory payout. I had six winning first half tickets that paid over $700 each. Nobody won the second half, and the consolation payoff was $350 per ticket. I left after that race ahead over $6,000. I approached the Quinella Double in Bet 3 in much the same manner as a Twin Trifecta or a Tri Super with a mandatory payout. I know that the payoff will be over $100 and possibly over $2,000. If I make a wager that costs under $100, and I'm reasonably certain that it is a winner, then I know that I will at least get my bet back and hopefully be the only winner for $2,000. When I handicap the first race, I'll figure out what I need for a reasonably sure winner, be it the potential winners for a bet three or the Quinella for a Quinella double. Then I handicap the second race, make my picks for the bet three or Quinella double, and for the bet three, go on to the third race. The cost of the bet that I think I need to win will determine whether I make the bet or not. If it takes me too far from my budget, or if I think that my return will be greater on other bets, I pass on the bet three or Quinella double and bet the races individually. In this course, I've taught you how to set a goal and what to do when you reach that goal. I've taught you how to make and follow a budget. I've taught you the strategy that I have used to win twin trifectas, tri supers, bet threes, and quinella doubles. I now want to give you seven tips that I have learned from years of experience. These are different situations that occur often in races. If you use my system of handicapping, you can see them coming and be able to take full advantage of them by using all the other information that I have taught you in my three courses. My first tip is in a collision, the advantage usually goes to the inside dog. The outside dog will be bumped wide and lose speed, and the inside dog may even benefit from the force of the collision. In this particular race, the eight dog bumps both the six and the four dog. The eight dog gets knocked out of the race, and the four and six dogs both get into the money. The second tip is if there is a scratch, we will know that the dogs coming out of the boxes on either side may benefit because they will have more running room. Pay attention to scratches and if a dog coming out of a box next to the scratch looks like it will run into the extra space created by the scratch dog, give it two extra points for post position. My third tip is if the dogs look like they will break at different speeds and they won't be bunching up and colliding, the dogs will more likely be able to run true to their form. In this case, especially in a long race such as a 3 8 mile or longer, I urge you to structure your bets based on how the dogs rank with their overall best time. My fourth tip is when an outside running dog is in an inside box or when an inside running dog is coming from an outside box and faces a big problem and so do all the other dogs that might be involved in a potential collision. The dog that breaks first will have a tremendous advantage. If you can see this situation happening, give the dog with the best early speed three extra bonus points. My fifth tip involves early speed. A dog with tremendous early speed can run where it wants because it will be ahead of the pack. Based on how I taught you to estimate early speed in the beginning course, remember that it will take a dog with strong closing ability to catch it. My sixth tip is if an inside running dog can get to the rail and find running room, it's going to be hard to beat. This relates to overall speed, closing ability, post position, and trouble. I'm going to show you how the two dog here slides through on the inside at the first turn and is able to run down the three dog. Consequently, this particular race I won $30,000 on. My seventh tip is if an outside running dog can get outside, it's going to be hard to beat. In this particular race, the eight dog is going to run inside. If it ran wide, I'd have to consider it a possible winner. The reason I'm giving you these seven tips is because you will run into many races in which the dogs are closely ranked by my point system. 
The diagrams that I taught you to make in my basic course will tell you when these seven situations may occur. In a tight race where you can see any of these situations arising, let these seven tips enhance my system. Structure a bet with the dog that the tip indicates will have an advantage and be aware that any of the other dogs can be in the money. Use whatever money that you have budgeted for that race to make a bet that takes advantage of the best odds. I'd like to explain a little known bet that I use in close races. If you think that three, four, or five dogs can win a race and any dog can come in second or third, put two dogs in a box with all the other dogs. I will pick two key dogs based on early speed and post position. That is, two dogs that I don't believe will get into trouble. I will box those two dogs with all the other dogs in the race. In an eight dog race, this trifecta box costs $36 and will pay off if the two dogs come in first, second, or third. It doesn't matter which dog wins, places, or shows. As long as the two dogs that you have boxed are in the money, you win. That wraps up my advanced course. I taught you how to establish a goal and a budget. I explained why you should know the status of the twin trifecta and the tri-super when you establish your goal and budget. I taught you my proven strategy to use on twin trifectas, tri-supers, quinella doubles, and bet threes. I showed you exactly how I have won twin trifectas and tri-supers. I taught you how to use your handicapping skill and bet structuring ability to take advantage of the odds. I gave you seven tips to watch for that lead to predictable results and I showed you how to make a bet for a closely contested race. By taking all three of my courses, you now know more about dog racing, handicapping, structuring bets, and how to win than anyone who hasn't taken these courses. In closing, I want to remind you of the importance of my beginning and intermediate courses. Don't try and make a bet without a thorough knowledge of handicapping and how to structure a bet. Remember, few people are good handicappers and even fewer people know how to structure bets. They waste money on boxes and keys and lose out on the biggest trifecta and superfecta payoffs. The money that they waste will end up in your pocket if you handicap the dogs, structure your bets, and check the odds before you place a bet. Structure all of your trifecta and superfecta bets like I taught you in the intermediate course. Remember that in most races, all dogs can show and all dogs can easily come forth. Well, that wraps up my advanced course. With what I've taught you in the beginning course, the intermediate course, and now the advanced course, you should be able to go to the track, handicap dogs, structure bets, and have a winning strategy. Good luck. If you would like to know more,